say it was so cold that the water from the fire hoses froze and struck the building. That's awful. How? Some say it was set. Others an accident in a cigar stump thrown down a water closet. That insurance guy George Maycomb, he's here. This is the worst wire building he ever saw. But we had our first date and it was part of our life. It's not just about us. I know. <laughs> I remember. And now? Rebuilt. There's a city council meeting in two days. Councilman Merton Labby says that they might add the theater somewhere on the third floor. That's not a theater, that's an attic. They'll fight it out. Can you go? They might need public input. Please? For us. For the theater. Are you sure we're not in the way? Everybody looks so busy. It's like they're building a big fancy set to last for all time. We're appreciating their handiwork. People are gonna pass through here and never look up. Never notice what they did here. I hope people notice. The town hired John Calvin Stevens to design this. Look at that horseshoe balcony. There are seats up there closer than in the orchestra. Large brass chandelier, stenciled ceilings. There'll be music, minstrel shows, community pageants, and plays. Lots of plays. The largest opera house in Maine. 684 seats. Acoustically perfect. Of course, it'll take a year to finish. Rome wasn't built in a day. It was quite a fight, but we won. Biddeford won. And all it took was annexing adjoining lots and increasing the building's footprint by 8%. You two, walk the stage before something happens all night. We'll come back when we're done. But which one? There are over 600 to choose from. Now, you need help? I've got some solos who will gladly show you the door. We're going, we're going. You should be very proud of yourselves.
dying of heart failure in front of a three-year-old daughter. It was a shocking, terrible loss. Are we ready to come back? If you mean, am I over it? Then no. But it's our theater. I needed to come back. You did too. You're right. It just feels almost disrespectful, you know? As a star of the stage herself, Eva wouldn't want us to quit coming because of what happened. Hazen, who is it tonight? J.J. Salvis? He's good. And local talent is always appreciated. But no, tonight we see W.C. Fields. <laughs> I am free of all prejudice. I hate everyone equally. I cook with wine. Sometimes I even add it to the food. I like children, <laughs> if they're properly cooked. <laughs> Does Mr. Fields know you're available in case he forgets a punchline? Gotta be the last ones. They won't wait, you know. They lock the doors. Theater goers have rules. Mm. May West, Al Jolson, Fred Astaire, the Bearmores. It's like we have our own little vaudeville away from vaudeville. Well, sure. Biddeford's on the national circuit. John Barrymore is so dreamy. Do you think John Barrymore is dreamy? <clears throat> For a serious actor, I mean. If you like Shakespeare. I'm more of a comedy guy myself. Even comic operettas like The Pirates of Penzance singing and laughs. Do you know why we're on the national circuit? Tell me. Because there is nothing like this between a Dunkwood and Portland. Who wants to go to Portland? I as well go to Boston. Hey, Zen. What is that? Not again. You got the hook the last time. They yanked you right back into the wings. You tore your dress jacket. The audience loves the local flavor. The amateur performer segment. Besides, it'll give Mr. Fields a bathroom break. Okay, a drink break then. Besides, I only need one to two minutes of good material. He's good, but he's just not. Actors love costumes, n'est-ce pas? Salvis and his amateur troupe have really stepped up, doing plays in French to French-speaking audiences, and he sells out. I know, I know. Directing and performing, Le Devoir du Médecin, The Indian's Vengeance, La Marchande de la Rue. See, I love this one. I don't even speak French. The costumes, the passion. The audience is leaning forward in their seats. The French dramatic clubs doing Un Drame de Famille. More French. The money raised goes to the poor. Like when the Shamrock Dancers raise money for the Alumni Scholarship Fund. This theater's always been about giving back. Of course I'm going, but next we see something funny. for live theater, not movies. I didn't mind the one-reelers. They were a welcome addition in between acts, but this, it's mass production. I'm seeing the same exact show as someone else is seeing in Bangor. It'll be the same exact show next week. But it's what we have. Somebody's gotta keep coming to keep this place open. You're right, you're right. The first Nickelodeon that opened in Biddeford in the National Hall only lasted, what, two years? Suppose I can wait that long, then back to plays. It's an opera house with perfect acoustics, made for live theater. Blame the talkies. No room for classy, memorable live theater. I mean, the last live show we saw was... Was what? Those days are over for now. Come on, it'll be fun. was the opera house, now it's city theater. That's when they killed it, the soul of live theater. 
It's just changed, that's all. <sighs> she never left. Be respectful. And do what? Acknowledge her. That's all she wants. Hi, Eva. Hi, Eva. Should we tell Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy just started improvements. I don't want to discourage him, do you? The staircase and lobby were paneled. There's a permanent movie screen, new poster display cases. For movies. Along with a projection booth. For a movies. A ticket booth and to compete with TV and drive-in. Cinemascope for widescreen movies. You two, do you need help? I have family to belong to. People just don't know when to leave. Sorry, Mr. Murphy. We were just appreciating what you've done to the theater. A man who wears flashy suits and drives a big car, who started his career as a theater usher at 11, will do anything to keep the crowds coming. <laughs> but you like the robe. And 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And even Lady and the Tramp. <laughs> Lady and the Tramp. Two dogs sharing a plate of spaghetti do not need cinemascope. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's gonna take more than that to save this theater. It needs something that's gonna make people take notice. Yeah, well, when you get the answer, let me know. It needs help. Helpers. Hey, Mr. Murphy, how long does it take you to clean this place? What if you had volunteers? <laughs> Nobody works for free, not in this economy. Unless they really love it. Hey, you keep dreaming. We could get in so much trouble. We have to. It's changed. It's not a thief anymore, it's a storage warehouse for the city. Might as well be my father's garage. Take it we're not alone. Never. Hi, Eva. You know, some things take getting used to. See? It's still here. Just sleeping. If Eva's still here, someone still thinks it's a theater. Wait there. Where are you going? To the mall, like everyone else. Remember when we thought it would last forever? I'd give anything for the sound of hammering right now. Now's not a good time in good old Biddeford. There's more closed stores than open ones on Main Street. No more Benoit's, no more Fleshman's, no more Puritan. Anyone left's being driven out. Just look. Listen. Remember. It's still dark. You're right. We need more lights. Come on! How do I know Eva won't trip me? Because she won't. I heard when the drama club put on the town of the Indians, the kids had to climb bicycles and parking meters. The stage was covered in boxes and crates of Christmas decorations. You know what they did? No. What? They cleaned it up and put on a show. <laughs> All it takes is costumes and you're transported to another era. <laughs> There's a light on in the costume shop. Let's be good citizens and turn it off. Why are we running? We're not running, we're exploring. 
I've never been up here before. Can you hear it? Eva? No, the ghosts of old productions. The orchestra, the audience laughter. A lot of theater happened here. Makes me dizzy looking down. Come on. Now where? To the set room and the prop room. We're getting the whole tour. We may never get another chance. Don't forget the light switch. This is where the magic happens. Here? With all this mess? It's only because nobody's using it. Well, I suppose you'll want to go to the catwalk next. The catwalk! <sighs> we used to see shows here. With big names. <laughs> and now? When people see what we see, they'll want to change it back. There's no way this is the end. They are dumping sand right in front of the stage for the mayor's horseshoe pit. We'll come back. We'll find others who feel like we do. Dreamers with theater in their blood. And we'll return the theater to her original glory. I can see it happening. You'll see. Don't give up on us, Eva. I love you. Is there somebody there? We're coming! Out right now before I have the cops show you the door. Dee Dee, how do I look? You look like a man who likes tools. I'm a volunteer. I see. So when do I get a tool belt? We went up to Caribou for seats from that closed theater, worked 18 hours a day for 375 seats, and they're not gonna match the ones we already have. But we are making progress. City Theater Associates is gonna get this place reopened. Others have tried. But now we have the backing of City Hall. Which means? <laughs> Which means I'm optimistic. The city is donating funds for physical improvements with council members on the board. Hey, look at us. I was down and now I'm up. You were up and now you're down. Well, maybe if I had a tool belt. <laughs> Just tired. Missed you. While you were on the road, you missed the army of volunteers. Okay. One person restored all the cherubs in the proscenium. You're right. One way or another, this place is reopening. Even if it means back to the movies. Frankenstein, Dracula, Psycho, My Little Chickadee. Welcome back, W.C. Fields. You know, there's no such thing as a tough child if you parboil them first for Are seven hours. Are you at all concerned that a campaign to raise serious money never made it halfway? <sighs> I only saw 30 to 40 people at the last show, maybe 50 to 60 at the last children's show. Yeah, but did you see the editorial in today's newspaper? Here. It says city theater is a symbol of the city's renaissance. It was and is a keystone to revitalizing a downtown bit. How do we fill the seats? With big name shows like The Odd Couple, West Side Story, Fiddler on the Roof, Oliver! That'll bring you back. Not with only three to four shows a year. I think we need to think bigger. Okay, we rent it out in the summer. I mean, there is no way we can compete with professional shows in theaters like Hack Matack and Gunquit. How long has this been here? What? Where? This, right here. The stage? <laughs> yeah, where you're standing. I mean, the apron. In the old days, the, the stage kind of just ended right here. When we premiered Me and My Shadow, remember? <sighs> to give the show the right amount of sizzle. 
<laughs> Truckloads of New York City cast off lighting equipment, props, and costumes arrived. And the apron was added. That's right. It's funny, if I close my eyes, it's almost like I watched it somewhere else. It was that good. <laughs> Is that bad? No, it's good. We just need consistency. Hmm. I heard Amy Campbell, the executive director, say, I've loaned the theater money. I've worked from four nothing to full salary. So that's good, right? I mean, we're making money. If you like the trial and error approach, movies, then concerts, then boxing and wrestling. Right. Hey, remember how I wanted to be on stage with W.C. Fields? Um, what do you think if maybe I hit back in the gym no, and... To paraphrase Amy, they're great fundraisers, they're great fun, but they don't belong in the theater. Well, what does? Apparently, barbershop quartets, San Francisco harpists, ballet, folk dance, Schooner Fair, Doc Severson, <laughs> and Leon Redbone. <laughs> okay, all right, so maybe too much variety. The Armory's hosting a casino fundraiser event. It'll never be enough. We need to give the theater a facelift to recapture her glory days. That's the missing piece. Well, the Rotary Club is giving us a grant for expanded lobby and office space with matching money from the city. The first major change in 90 years. Finally, the audiences can relax in the lobby instead of, you know, just lounging on the stairs. We still need upgrades and restorations. And plays and audiences. They'll come when it's beautiful again. Eva agrees with you. She seems more active lately. I've heard singing, seen sinks turn on by themselves. Ooh. She's the true spirit of the theater. Always hanging around through good times and bad. Like you and me. Don't give up, Eva. We won't either. How did we get here? You did it. You and your army of tireless volunteers. And City Hall. New seats for everyone's bums. Even. It's true. And we have to thank Janet Ross for the community outreach. Community involvement, the theater family, and City Hall. That's what keeps City Theater alive. <laughs> keeps us alive. What would our lives be like without this place? Full restoration the way you always wanted. Thanks to grants and money from the city for a roof, flooring, electrical, ventilation, etc, etc. We finally removed that clunky one-ton marquee. Hey, that was oh, history. Replacing it with something classy. Thanks to a generous donation from Dr. Hurst. Very generous. But we will always need volunteers to act, usher, build sets, strike sets, and feed the cast on a long text Sunday. Oh my, do you remember Becky with them? Who? <laughs> of course! <laughs> stepped in the wrong place in the costume shop way up in the attic and stepped through the ceiling. Pieces of spackling dropped just missing audience members. <laughs> Thankfully, they were people we knew and friends of the theater. To Becky. To Becky, who loved this theater so much, she donated in her will towards future repairs. That's love. You're right. I mean, what did we ever do for this place? Hey, we help, but sometimes it takes resources and professionals for the big stuff. Oh, you mean like the professionals who painted over the patina of olive green on the ceiling and the sound and lighting updates? Biddeford stepped up too, focusing on building code violations, solving certain odor problems. <laughs> there are more stores open for business than empty. Extra, extra, Main Street becomes inviting. <laughs> then Steve Burnett opened with Neil Simon's Fools and Studs Turkle's Working. The audience has flocked back in for comedy and musicals. Who'd have thought? Thanks for not giving up on us, Eva. We're doing it. Thanks to the current board and director, Mark Nahorny. 
We're transforming into a year-round performing arts center. And the artistic director, Linda Surgeon. <laughs> and Linda. <laughs> and Linda, who claims that she has the best job in the entire world. That's because she does. <laughs> she gathers us before every single performance and says to all of us, and I quote, <laughs> Have the most fun you've ever had in your entire lives. Now all directors will tell you where to stand, what to wear, how to look, but I have never had another director tell me to have fun. And we do, even when Eva shows up to goose our performance. And hopefully the audience can feel the electricity. You saw the path to get here. We had our bumps. We keep moving forward. It takes a lot of work, a lot of passion to keep this place alive. But it's not over. City Theater is a living, breathing member of the community. And it'll be something bigger and better tomorrow. There's love here. Energy. Brilliance. A tireless commitment to community. You can feel it when you walk through the door. You can feel it in the building, in every seat. The people, the volunteers. The spirit, the love. It's all here. It's always been here. Right here.